Hi and welcome to the Resources Roadhouse. I'm Wally Graham. I'm at the Future Facing Commodities Conference in Singapore, where I caught up with Andy Tudor, who's Managing Director of Nexus Minerals. Andy, welcome to the Roadhouse. It's good to see you. You too. All right, Nexus Minerals. Um, uh, Started chasing copper at the Mathenga project um, in Victoria, is that correct? Yep. Yeah. And um, things have just been on a roll since then, apparently. Mm. So can you give us a bit of a rundown what's been going on? Yeah, sure. Look, the, um, yeah, we, we've been looking for uh, you know, copper uh, in general, you know, as well as our gold assets in Western Australia, which have been a priority for, for 10 years and, and remain critical and important part of the company of Nexus Minerals. Um, but yeah, chasing copper and uh, my experience, I've got over 15 years experience in, in porphyry copper exploration in the Asia Pacific and so we've always had that on the agenda to, to look particularly for good copper assets but they're hard to find um, and the thing got brought to me from a, a, a client in a previous life um, and it looked particularly interesting so we uh, you know, did all ODD on it and I've spent the last two years undertaking a portrait fertility assessment. So, you know, it rolls off the tongue quite quite easily, but a huge amount of work on the ground. Firstly, you know, a regional soil program was undertaken, sort of 250 square meters, square meters between samples, brought that into 50 meters, aeromag, ground magnetics, and each of the, I suppose, the sections of the fertility study you know, kept getting green ticks as we moved forward. And obviously the aim is to get it to a point where we're, we're drill ready. Uh, and that's where we are now after two years. So oh. it's, it's taken that long and that's, uh, it looks that good that it's, it's now drill ready. Well, you know, two, two years uh, for a, a copper project to, to advance that far, yeah. I mean, it's not, um, it's not a long time because it's, no. you know, as we all know, copper projects, uh, they are uh, a long term yeah. investment. Yeah. Look, and it's uh, and again, normally you don't expect it to be sort of so positive across all of the aspects, and so anyway, we've been, been you know, very buoyed by that. Um, and finally, sort of the last couple of weeks, we spoke to the, one of the local land owners who we've been in negotiation and you know, been on their ground for, for the last couple of years and, and got their permission to, to drill uh, on their property. And they've got sort of 700 acres covering the most prospective area that we want to go drilling. And uh, you know, hats off to, to the Victorian and mines department and the, the way that the, their processing work now um, and the low impact class uh, we can go and diamond drill without any any further requirements for uh, any compliance um, everything is covered as long as you're working on existing tracks it's classed as low impact so it allows you to move from that exploration phase into drilling uh, seamlessly so the project is now you know, as of two weeks ago uh, drill ready and um, yeah we're coming with our theories and our uh, concepts around it which we've uh, put a lot of effort into and uh, significant positives there and uh, we look forward to doing it. And uh, a, a copper project um, at the Future Facing Commodities uh, Conference you know, everybody's looking at the, the new fangled, you know, the new, you know, the lithiums and the, and the vanadiums and all the new fashionable ones. And uh, copper just it just keeps on going. It's, it, it never goes out of fashion. Look, it doesn't, and it's certainly what brought us over east in the first place. And you now, while we've been then in the northeast of Victoria, um, you know, there was a discovery in, in that area of uh, LCT bearing pegmatites in this uh, Wagga Ormeo belt. And so we realised that, you know, we need to also keep an eye out, which we always are, for any opportunities, and undertook then a, a major, a regional study, uh, having a look at the whole of this Wagga Ormeo belt, which goes seven, eight hundred kilometres up into New South Wales and is about 60 to 70 kilometres wide, um, and had a good look at that and sort of realised there was huge prospectivity in the, the correct age rocks, you know, we're after these Silurian granites um, that have punched their way up through in this Wagga Ormeo zone, contain LCT pegmatites, got a history of tin mining, so they're the sort of granites you want. Um, and so then we, obviously we look at a, a geological first, and you know, get the right rocks, look at the regional uh, prospectivity, and, uh, and then we went and had a look about who, who pegged it or who owned it, and uh, who do we speak to, and 90% of the ground we wanted had, uh, had no pegging at all uh, in history. So approached New South Wales Mines Department and said, look, we want to do this mega peg, which is over 15,000 square kilometres, uh, biggest peg in New South Wales history, um, but it's valid and it's very much concentrating on getting the uh, over the right geology, and that's what we've done. So we've been through the process there, and again, fantastic hats off to the New South Wales Mines Department in less than three months, went from application to grant. So I received that grant last week, so we can get on the ground there. So we've already got two crews on the ground over there, and uh, we'll start hunting the LCT pegmatites as well. Oh, well, I tell you what, I'm quite exhausted after all that. <laughs> Sorry. But it's, but it's well worth it. Uh, yeah, well worth uh, hearing all about it. 
keep us up to date, keep yeah. us informed about what's going on so we can bring all the news to our readers and viewers at the Roadhouse. And uh, yeah, a, a very interesting story that we do want to keep across. Thanks, Paul.